What's up? Hey guys, it's Yvonne. In this video, I want to show you how to create a Facebook ads campaign from start to finish in a neat step-by-step -step guide. I will also add some neat little tips and tricks, so keep your ears open. That being said, let's get straight into it. The first thing you have to do to create a Facebook ads account is have a Facebook account, just a regular Facebook personal account. I am already signed in here, but the first thing you want to do is just head over to facebook.com, either create an account or log in. Okay. After you do that, head over to business.facebook.com and you will come across a page that looks like this. You will be creating a separate business manager ads account. This has many advantages and I strongly recommend you to set up uh, a Facebook ads account this way. Uh, many reasons. One is if you are an agency or if you think you will be working as part of a team later on, you can request access to accounts, you can manage them, you can add team members. So kind of like an MCC in Google Ads for those of you that are familiar. Another really cool benefit is if you're especially an affiliate, you can create several ad accounts and if one of them gets suspended, you can head over to another one, okay? So it's kind of like a backup feature, which you cannot do if you just use your personal account. So head over to business.facebook.com, very important that I mention this because a lot of people don't do it this way, and then click on Create Account. So this is where we're going to set up our account. So enter your business name here, your actual name, your business email. So for example, I can say, you know, OME for Online Marketing Essentials. Um, I'll leave my name as is, and let's say I'll use fmarketing at gmail.com <clears throat> for testing. I'll click next. And then you have to uh, add your uh, address and stuff like that. I already have um, a business ads account, so I'm not going to create another one, but you just follow these steps, verify your email, very simple. And after you do that, you will land on a page that looks like this. Now, Facebook constantly, constantly changes their layout, okay? They're always testing, always. So what I'm showing you right now, it might look a little bit different on your end when you first log in. But don't worry, I will show you where the hub of all the pertinent information is that we have to go to, to do what we have to do. Now, obviously, you won't see these accounts. These are just some of the backup accounts I created. Don't worry about that. We do have to do two things before we can also run our Facebook ads. So we had to create this account. Now we have to create a Facebook page and we have to create an actual account, assuming you don't have anything because you won't see your accounts like I have here. So what you're going to do is, if you're on a page like this, go to business settings over here. Uh, it will open it in a new tab and let's create an ad account first, okay? So click on ad accounts. What you're gonna do is click add and click on create a new account. And this is what I was saying that the benefit of this is if you're an agency, you can request access to an account and you can manage it through your business manager. So you click on create account, add account name. So here I could maybe call it add account six. Let's see if it lets me do that. I think a limit, it might be five. You can select payment method. I'm going to go ahead and say add payment method later. Yeah, so don't add payment method to all these accounts. Okay, that's the point. If one of them gets banned, you want to be able to go back and add a different payment method to those accounts. So there is a neat little uh, tip for you for the long term. So let's see if I can create another account because I already have five. I think there is a limit. Yeah, so there is a limit for me, but that's how you would create an account. Okay, so you would do that and you will see your accounts here. And over time, I think you can keep adding more and more accounts. So at first you might be limited to like one or two, uh, but then as time goes on, as Facebook sees that you're marketing, you can keep adding new accounts. Uh, the next thing we have to do is add a page. We cannot promote without an actual page, okay? So we're gonna head over to pages here, click on add. Again, you can request access to a page. You can just um, add a page if your business already owns it and you wanna kinda claim it. Um, and over here, we'll just select create new page. So we can start from scratch. Obviously, whatever uh, kind of field you're in, like if you're an artist or a public figure, you'd select that. If you're in the entertainment niche, like games, you'd select this. Uh, if there's a cause you wanna go for, uh, you just select this group. But we're gonna go the most kind of generic one is this brand or product, so I'll click that. Let's enter the name. So the product I'm promoting is this Ted's Woodworking Guide, popular ClickBank product for those of you that know. So you know, I'll, I'll, I'll name my group Ted's Woodworking Extreme because Ted's Woodworking is probably taken. Then select a category. In this case, let's say, um, you know, go through this. 
let's say tools and equipment and let's say create page the name might be taken let's see if it is give it a second to load okay perfect so it looks like it's not taken so here we are um, so once you add the page you have to click on view page and you know play around with this spend some time obviously this looks kind of spammy because there's nothing here so what you want to do is you know add an image you want to add a cover you want to go to all these kind of options here like about and just fill these details in because when you're running your ads people will see the ad but they will also see your page and social proof is a huge part of Facebook advertising so when they see your page um, they might want to click it and get to know a little bit more about it is this a company that's been there for a long time right so you would want to go to about it's still loading and just kind of fill all these details in okay now let's assume that um, we filled everything in okay so we have that one more thing you have to do is go into settings and you have to make this profile publicly available to make your ads okay so you have to go over here page visibility and make sure it's set to page published if it is not set to page published you will not be able to use this page to promote Facebook ads so another little tip for you, I guess, because there are a lot of people that come up and say, uh, I'm not able to run my ad with my page. What's going on? This is why. Okay, make sure it's published. That being said, let's assume you created your page. We created the ad account. Now we can finally start creating the campaign. Okay, so we can close out of this. So on the top left, this is your hub of all the information. Uh, of all the kind of options you can go to and again keep in mind Facebook does change these constantly okay so it might look a little bit different for you but just remember the name okay so the name we're looking for here is ads manager so whatever your interface looks like click on ads manager this is where we're going to actually create our ads so give it a second to load so you can check uh, change your account here we're in ad account 5 which is fine we'll use this and Let's create our campaign. So we have the campaign level, ad set level, and ad level. We're gonna do everything here. So I'm gonna click on create here from the start. And let's create the name. Now, there is a guided creation option that might pop up for you. Don't select it. Um, I would much prefer you get used to this ad manager layout because this is the layout where you're going to be coming in, copying and pasting, making changes. You will not be able to use the guided creation to make edits or mass duplicate your ads okay so use this um, use this layout do not use guided creation okay we're gonna do everything here so for the campaign name let's say we want to name it Ted's woodworking uh, buying type the only option here is auction so we'll leave it at that okay campaign objective there are a bunch of different objectives here don't worry okay the most default objective if you're just starting out with no data at all is traffic once you do start getting conversions check out my Facebook video on how to set up your pixels because that is important I have a Facebook playlist take a look at that once you do that the goal is the default is conversions okay so you'll be alternating between traffic and conversions now depending on what you want to do you can select the other options if you have an app like an Android or iOS app you click app installs if you want to promote a video you click video views so what Facebook does is it optimizes um, your ads to be shown for this specific objective for example for video views you get uh, some additional cool features um, additional cool metrics that Facebook will provide you like how many people viewed five seconds of your video how many people viewed 15 seconds of your video stuff like that that is not available with other campaign types okay so that's why it's important to select your goal uh, but unless you have videos, there's really no point to select video views, right? Unless you have an app, there's no point to select an app. Stuff like that. Lead generation, Facebook provides an actual form within Facebook. So you don't have to take people to your landing page. People enter their email, their name, whatever else within Facebook itself. So that's lead generation, something worth testing. Post engagement and page likes is basically if you want to get more social proof on your posts, if you want to get likes on your posts, if you want to get shares comments that would be post engagement if you want to get only likes Facebook will optimize to show it to people who are most likely to just like your page not necessarily click or buy just like there there are people out there you know that just go through and like everything that's what Facebook is gonna show your ads to um, event responses haven't used this one I believe it's if you set up an event 
uh, people will respond to that, so mo most likely to respond to events, messages. You can actually send, um, uh, make an ad, and if someone clicks on it, they will receive a message in their actual Facebook Messenger app, okay? So stuff like that. Conversions optimizes for people most likely to buy, okay? Based on the conversion that you set up, again, which is why pixels are important. Catalog sales and store traffic, if you have um, if you have a store, right, and you have like, like you're an e-commerce store, you have a bunch of products, you would probably go with these. And there's a process where you can upload the information and all your products to Facebook and everything will be available, okay, quick and easy. Brand awareness and reach, um, the goal here is for Facebook to show ads to as many people as possible, not necessarily buy, not necessarily click, just to see, okay. Idea here is we want our brand to be known, we're new, we're targeting this very first awareness stage of the funnel and we want people to just know that we exist, okay? So you would select these. Like I said, most of the time you will probably start out with traffic just to get traffic to your page. So that's why um, this makes sense for you now that you understand how all these other ones work. So we'll go with traffic, um, A-B test, leave that off. I cover split testing in my Facebook playlist. That's not necessary, uh, but check the playlist out if you want these details. Campaign budget optimization. What this does is, um, so with Google, you're able to set the budget at the campaign level. With Facebook, by default, you set the budget at the ad set level. So if you want to set the budget at the campaign level, which then distributes the budget evenly across all your ad sets, you would toggle this on. If you want to set the budget at the ad set level, you leave this ad off, okay? For simplicity, we'll leave it off and I'll show you what it looks like to set the budget at the ad level. Um, we don't have to set the names here yet. Let's save this to draft, okay? We're not publishing anything yet. And let's just confirm and make sure that our first step, right? We have three steps, campaign, ad set, ad. Let's make sure that the campaign is set up properly. So we have the campaign name, we have the auction type uh, or the buying type, which is auction by default. Um, and we select traffic. Let's select more options and see what's here. Campaign spending limit, that's that campaign optimization. Um, yeah, so that would be that one, I believe. It's the same thing, actually. I haven't, uh, I haven't seen that before, let me see. Oh, okay, so this one will, uh, so almost similar. So this option here is um, even if you have the budget set at the ad set level, uh, the total budget for all those ad sets will not exceed this amount. So if you wanna set a maximum amount, um, then it will not, uh, it will not exceed it. The difference between the two is that this optimizes based on the best performing ad set and uh, distributes the ad spend across to the ad set that is most likely to perform. Facebook will do that automatically. In this case, there's no such thing. Each ad set still has its own budget, but you will not exceed a certain amount, if that makes sense. So once we've confirmed that everything is good to go here, um, let's ch change the ad set level. So we can click here on this uh, word here and let's go to the ad set level now this is where really uh, everything happens okay where, where the main research part comes in so let's click on edit here uh, leave the ad set name as is for now because I will show you how to name it a bit later because if you create a bunch of ad sets which you will be doing if you are a more experienced marketer and you'll be doing a bunch of tests and stuff like that uh, you will have to create a specific ad set name. It can't just be anything, okay? Because then you won't find it. So let's just leave that as is. Leave this at website. Leave dynamic creative set to off. I have a video on that. Check it out if you want to know the details, if you want to know the scoop. This is not necessary for us right now. And in fact, some people don't use it. Uh, an offer is like a special offer if you have a promotion. So you can click here, right? You, you select the page. Um, Let's see our page that's woodworking. And then you can create an offer like 20% off or something like that, okay? Now we're not gonna do it here, we don't have an offer. So we'll leave that as is. Daily budget, okay, so here's where you set your budget for the ad set. Like I said, um, without the campaign optimization, you set it here. So let's leave it at 20. Um, you can set an end date. So, you know, if, if you're running away or going away somewhere, you don't want your campaign to keep running forever, um, you set an end date. So we'll leave that as is for now. This is day parting uh, with lifetime budgets. Okay, so hold up. So this one is, let me just show you what that is. So if you want to run ads on a specific schedule, okay, like, I don't know, you're a, you're a, um, you pick up phone calls, right? And you're open nine to five. Then you'd wanna set, you know, 
um, let's see, 9 a.m. to, where's the 5 here? Something like that, right? And you just select all these options here. And so on Tuesday, you're going to run from, let me deselect that, Oops. from whatever that is, right, 9 to 5, okay? And that's basically what that's going to be, right? Uh, you can set it to every day if you want, so you don't have to do it one by one. But that's what this is. We don't need to do that. We don't want a lifetime budget. We want a daily budget. So you can't select that option, but that's okay. Okay, audience. If you're doing remarketing, you will be able to select audiences here. Again, this is a brand new account. You probably don't have anything. Check out my other, my Facebook playlist though, if you do wanna see how to utilize this. So we're gonna leave that as is. Locations. Um, you set the location, okay? So people re living in or recently in this location, people only living in this location, people just recently in this location, not necessarily living in, and people traveling, okay? So you pick one whichever suits your needs. Like if you're a travel agency, you, you, could, you could probably say something like traveling in this location or something like that. Uh, but let's add, you know, obviously United States, right? That's like the most common source of traffic. So we'll click enter. So let's say Canada and US for now, okay? So we're gonna scroll down. Let's select an age group. So 18 to 65 is okay for us, but obviously, you know, you, you set the age. Facebook is a bit more accurate in their age and demographics and all that stuff because this is part of the sign up process and you can't have a 15 year old signing up as a, you know, uh, like someone who indicates they're 15 years old and then has a photo that looks like 60 years old. You can't have that. So it's, it's more accurate information than say Google where you can just input any age, any uh, gender and no one's gonna find out. So keep that in mind. Um, all genders obviously come here, select the gender. We don't need that. Okay, detailed targeting. So this is where the magic happens, okay? Now there are two approaches you can take. One is selecting an interest, um, like one interest at a time, okay? And this is good because if you make sales or if you don't make sales, you can say, okay, this interest group is working, this interest group isn't. I see a lot of people just putting in a ton of interest groups, like let's say, okay, woodworking, right? So we can select woodworking here. Look at suggestions, woodworker. So stuff like this. So if you if you add a bunch of these different in interest groups here, and let's say you convert, you don't know which interest group is, is responsible for the sales, okay? So what I like to do is I like to keep one interest group at a time. That's that's the one approach. That's that's what I personally do. One interest group at a time, and then <clears throat> split test. So I, I can create a bunch of different ad sets with different um, names okay like different interest groups so that's the one approach to doing it the second approach to doing it is to laser focus and hyper target so instead of just leaving it one interest group at a time what I could do is narrow audience okay so I could click narrow audience and I could add something else I could add another interest group or you can add something like engaged shoppers which are people that are that 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 have bought something in the past however many weeks based on Facebook so you click engage shoppers so now in order for my ad to show, someone has to like this interest group, carpentry, and they have to be an engaged shopper. And I can keep narrowing further, right? I could say, you know, someone who likes Russell Brunson, for instance. Let's see if that shows up. Okay, so now all these three credentials have to be met for my ad to show. Now, obviously, uh, maybe let me change this because here our, our reach is limited. Let me just make it like woodworking or something, something broad. Now, obviously your, I was gonna say, your number goes down, right? So here, let's select this one. As you add more and more of these layers, the, the, the number to who you can promote to goes down, obviously, because it's harder to meet all these criteria, but that's the point. The quality of your audience, audience is going to go up, right? So you only have 210,000 people, which is, which is still a lot. But these are much more qualified leads because not only do they like woodworking, whom you know, anybody can like woodworking, but they're also engaged shoppers and they also like Russell Brunson, okay? So that's what you could do. Um, I'm going to quickly show you a, a research tool at the end of this, closer to the end of the video, uh, so you could know where to get more ideas, but generally this is how you set it up, okay? So you have the two approaches. So um, let's say we wanna stick with this. So what I would do, right? Uh, well, actually, let's go down and then, and then we'll go back to the name. Uh, so you can expand your reach. So again, this is like Facebook, you know, like say, uh, uh, enhanced CPC bidding, if, if you're, you're familiar with Google, where Facebook will expand your reach to additional people that they think might convert. 
if you're tight on budget and you don't want to experiment, you don't necessarily trust Facebook, I, I personally wouldn't do this. Uh, I would just leave that as off and just select my target audience, okay? Now, the rule of thumb, by the way, I didn't mention, I'd like the, my, my reach for targeted audience to be between 100 to 500,000 people, okay? If you have something more than that, it, I think it's pretty broad. If you have something less than that, it's too narrow, you probably won't get much traffic. So I like my rule of thumb to be between 100 and 300,000 people, and this matches that perfectly, okay? So there's that. You can save this audience, so if you wanna use this exact audience in the future, and you wanna test something different, like say a different country, you can save an audience, and that way you don't have to go through all these again, okay? So you just click save audience, I'm not gonna do that. Uh, let's go here. So all languages, you. Again, same as with Google, you select the language who it's most likely to show the ads to, like English speakers, Spanish speakers, uh, connections. Let me see what this one is. Uh, so yeah, so you can also add people, say, who liked your page, or people, uh, you know, friends of people who liked your page, stuff like that. So you can add these connections here as well. We're gonna leave it blank for now. Okay, placements. Where do you want your ad to show? So automatic means Facebook is gonna show your ad everywhere. Instagram, Facebook newsfeed, Facebook, you know, sides, Facebook stories, stuff like that. If you are a bit more tight on budget, you don't wanna experiment, you don't trust Facebook, you wanna go with manual placements and set the placements yourself. So if you wanna promote only on Facebook, for instance, you deselect all these options here, Messenger and Instagram, and you will now be promoting only on Facebook. Now the potential reach is 83,000 people, so maybe you wanna, you know, go back up and change one of these options here. But what I mentioned about the audience size, that's a rule of thumb. So this is probably gonna be a pretty targeted, targeted audience. So maybe you can leave it at 83K, right? And that's okay, that's fine. Um, yeah, so you just, you know, here it shows you a picture of where your ad's going to show. So news feed, Instagram feed, uh, Facebook marketplace, you know, uh, Facebook video feed. So you deselect what you want. So the generally the best performing ones or the ones to start testing with are Facebook news feed. So I can deselect all these and just leave it at Facebook newsfeed, which is what people see when they actually use Facebook and scroll down. So I'm gonna leave it at that. I'm gonna deselect stories. I might have to click it twice. Deselect in stream, deselect search, deselect an article. And now we're only running ads on the Facebook newsfeed. It's a safe bet. We're not experimenting with anything. We have a strict budget and we wanna, you know, we only, only wanna test what we know is generally most likely to work. If you have a more expanded budget, you can go ahead and test these out and see what works for you. We're gonna leave that as is. Let's click show more options. So over here is device settings. So obviously if you're promoting apps, right, especially you'd wanna select which device setting you have. Uh, only when connected to Wi-Fi, this is pretty cool. Uh, if you are promoting something, you know, something that maybe requires a little more research, a little more in-depth, um, sign up process maybe you want to set up uh, only when connected to wi-fi that generally means that people are uh, at home they're more comfortable you know they're not somewhere out like in a train or something you know checking their phone for two minutes right generally that's what it means so that's up to you if you want to do it uh, but that's a cool feature to have now you can exclude content and publishers so this is for audience network instant articles and in-stream videos uh, we are only promoting on the news feed you don't have to worry about that but what this does is it's kind of like an IP or a placement exclusion in Google where you exclude you know, places that you don't want your ad to show. You know these places don't perform and you wanna remove them, okay? So that's what that does. Um, and then here, obviously, you can optimize by link clicks, by impressions, by daily reach. Obviously, you want clicks, right? So I'm gonna leave it at optimize for clicks. We want clicks to our site. That's the goal of a traffic campaign. Over here, you could set a maximum cost per click. So say, I'm not gonna pay more than a dollar per click, for example, okay? Show bid strategies. You have some bid strategies here, you know, cost cap. Uh, this is like the average cost will not be more than the certain amount. And over here, um, each click will not go over above a dollar, okay? So you select the options there. Let's go to show more options. What else do we have here? Yeah, so when you get charged, you can select here if you wanna get charged for every time your ad is shown or for every time your ad is clicked. Delivery type, if you choose accelerated, uh, your entire budget might be spent within the next few minutes or hours. Uh, basically, Facebook is gonna just run your ad nonstop until it wastes all the budget right away. Uh, if you leave this off, it's going to uh, evenly spread out your budget across the day, and that way you can gather some more data about which parts of the day maybe work better. 
Uh, but if you want data, you want it asapity sap, you want it right now, select accelerated, it's gonna run right away. Okay, so let's go back to the title. So in the title, the things that you can change at the asset level are, as you noticed here, it's country, it's age, it's gender, and it's targeting, okay? So that's what ideally we should put in our, uh, in our ad set name. If you have an audience that you're targeting only, then you can just put the audience name because that's the only thing you'll be targeting. Like if you have a lookalike or something, you can just put the lookalike name here. In our case, we're promoting, let's say, um, Canada, US. Uh, we're promoting all genders. We're doing, I think, 18 to 65. What was our interest group? Uh, it was something like woodworking, right? It was... Uh, Engaged shoppers and Russell. So you can make this right, whatever you want it to be in terms of what you want to put where, but this is the rule of thumb. You want to add everything that can be changed here because later on, if I go back, I duplicate this and I uh, decide to test out a di different countries. I, I, I want to test out Brazil. Then I'm going to delete this and I'm going to say Brazil for that other ad group, right? So that's, that's what we want to have for our title. Let's close out of that. And there you go, we're done at the ad set level. Last but not least, let's go to the ad. So again, I'm gonna click here or just select this option right here. I'll click on this tab this time. It says one ad is with errors because we don't have any pictures yet. So let's go in here. Um, so depending on the image on the actual ad, we can name it here. So let's say, you know, let's say we find a nice picture of wood. We'll say uh, wood picture and text about free stuff okay so that's the name of our ad uh, just a little bit describing what this ad is because especially if you're using tracking software and you want to track you want to be able to tell which ad right like like which ad is it that performed if you just write something like ad one well you'll have no idea what that ad one consists of okay so that's the first thing you want to do click on Ted's woodworking here um, create ad yeah so over here we just Let's just go down. If you want to advertise on Instagram, you select that. Uh, full screen mobile experience. Not sure what that is. I actually haven't used it. Uh, apparently, some fast loading mobile experience that loads when people interact. Yeah, so if you want some specific uh, special mobile experience, you select that. Haven't used it myself. Uh, so let's add the, the image first. Okay, so let's get rid of this error issue here and let's add midi uh, media. So you can add a video, you can add an image. Again, if you wanna optimize for videos, you're probably better off with a video views campaign, okay? But you can test them. You can create two different campaigns, right? Split test, one traffic, one video views, see which one performs. So the cool thing about images here is Facebook has a partnership just like Google with stock photos. So you can get some really excellent high quality images for like literally anything at all uh, for free, right? As long as you don't edit them. You can't take them, edit them, and then put them back. You have to use them exactly as they are. So here, let's give it a second to load and let's type in, you know, woodworking or something. Let's uh, find an image here. Now, if you use that dynamic ad creative that I, that I told you about earlier, you can split test different images. Um, you know, again, check out that video. One thing to consider though, is that if you are doing something like that, you can't really split test ads against each other because now each ad will have a bunch of different things and you're not able to see which combination works best. With dynamic creatives, you only see uh, which which specific headline out of the three headlines or which specific image out of the three images works best. So something to keep in mind. Okay, so woodworking. So let's say, you know, we want to go with this image as an example. And uh, these images, by the way, they're already um, kind of cut out and customized to be specifically used for Facebook. Okay, so that's pretty cool. You don't have to go in and edit them. <laughs> so Ted's woodworking extreme. And then you have this guy, like, looks like he's, a, he's an extreme worker or something. So the... the fits perfectly um, okay so you have three places here we have to edit you know website is easy um, we want to add the description which shows up right here so news feed link description we have the headline here which shows up right there and we have the text now contrary to Google Ads where the first thing people see is the headline with Facebook ads the first thing they see is the text so you want to make the text stand out okay you want to make your image stand out Unlike Google Ads, people aren't looking for your product. They're not looking for it. They, they don't go to Facebook to shop for woodworking products. They don't. Uh, so you wanna make your ad catchy, okay? You wanna make it stand out. My rule of thumb is, as I mentioned for Google, was using the keyword in the headline. For Facebook, I like to add a question in the text, okay? Grab their attention. So 
you know, you can get creative. This is something you can't make up right now on the spot. You gotta get creative with what type of question. Let's keep it simple. Let's say, want free 50 woodworking guides, okay? And then another cool thing you can do, check out my video on emojis. I'm gonna press, I'm on Windows, I'm gonna press the Windows key and that period, okay? And it's gonna pull up the emoji bar. Uh, but check out that other video if you wanna know, you know, some other ways of doing it. Um, so let's say, so here I'm gonna add these emojis because it's pretty cool, it adds to the flare, um, grabs more attention, right? So want free 50 woodworking guides, you know, you wanna describe this a little bit. Um, so let's say something like, if you want access to the best 50 woodworking guides on the planet, Okay, super cheesy. Probably don't want to write that, but we'll just do it <laughs> for simplicity. Um, check out our free guide. Click on sign up down below and get started right now. And then what we can do is we can add a symbol like this, a little hand symbol to say, you know, check it out down below. And there you go. Okay, so there's our primary text. It looks like this. Um, we pre okay, so you can send it to a notification. Don't worry, I will show you how to preview this. Don't worry about that now. But let me see, where was the um, that preview option? Okay, so before we can see different, vari okay, yeah, so we can't see variations from here, so we have to preview it. I forgot, we're not in dynamic creative ad mode. Um, so we will have to save it and then we can preview it, okay? And we can review it here. So don't worry about that. Uh, here's the desktop newsfeed if you wanna see what it looks like on desktop. Um, now, depending on how much text you write, you might see the see more button you know, somewhere else, like up here or something, but this is roughly what it's gonna look like. So they'll see the see more right there. That prompts a little user micro commitment, which is pretty cool, and uh, starts off with a question, okay? And by the way, here's why it's important to add a Facebook, you know, to optimize your page a little bit so that you can see an image here, right? Otherwise, it's a big T and people don't know what that is. So that being said, let's move on to the headline. So headline is, okay, so let's, um, this isn't the first thing people see, but you do wanna kinda summarize what this is about. So let's say free woodworking guides, okay. Now, if the headline is long enough, then the description, you, you won't see the description, okay. Uh, so just keep that in mind. Like if I keep writing, the headline is just gonna go over to where this description is. So uh, that's why, you know, this one is not always shown, but let's say we have a cool 440 page guide you can download right now, okay? So something like that, and there you can see there. Okay, so next thing we have to do, let's add a website real quick. Uh, let's add this one, and I made an unbounce. Paste it here. You can have a display link, this is optional, you know, so maybe I'll do something like, I'll delete this www, and I'll just say Ted's Woodwork Live, and you know, just a little branding, right? Gets you out there. Call to action again, something you can experiment, you can test with. Um, let's say, what is what is our what is our thing? What do we do? Uh, we sign up. I guess so, right? I guess we sign up. There's nothing else really here that would make sense. Or we can get get offer, right? Because it's kind of an offer. Or download. It's a download. Uh, let's say. Let's just say sign up here. We'll leave it at that. Languages again, okay, so um, your ad will not be translated, okay? So let's get that that out of the way. Uh, if you add a language, it will not be translated. It will just show ad to the different people. So in the, in the ad set section, we had an option where we chose languages. So if you have Spanish in addition to English, for instance, then you, will, you can create a Spanish ad and see if that works better for the Spanish speakers, okay? So that's what this is. Um, pixels, don't worry about that. We have to set it up. Obviously, this video can go on for hours and hours if we go through that too. So don't worry about setting up the Facebook pixel. Um, check out my other video though, the complete Facebook tutorial uh, on, on pixel stuff if you wanna learn how to do that. But that is pretty much it. Let me see, I'm trying to think. So that's pretty much it. We're good to go here. Now, one thing we could do is now that we've done that, uh, let me show you two more things. One is how to kind of split test different things, and the other one is how to uh, just do quick interest group research. 
So if we want to split test, right? Remember, we laser targeted in this in this ad set. We laser targeted. Uh, nope, don't do that. Click on edit if you want to edit the ad group. Uh, we, we laser targeted and said, oh, these three interest groups must fit, right? So let's suppose we want to go by interest, in like one interest at a time. So what I'm going to do is select that. I can click quick duplicate here, or I can duplicate and uh, select how many I want. Okay, so let's click uh, quick duplicate here. And it's going to just quickly duplicate our campaign and create it all from scratch. That is why I created an ad first, okay? Because you don't want to duplicate an ad set before you make the ad and then have to go in and remake the ads for every single one of those ad groups, okay? So create everything first, get the whole process done, and then you can duplicate, okay? So in this one, for instance, right, we can click here. That's the second one we did. Uh, the start day, reset your start date to today, okay? Let's just click that. So over here, now let's do, let's say, one interest group at a time. So I can maybe delete that, delete that. And in this case, yeah, so this is way too much. You can do it if you want to test. Clicks might be cheaper, but it's not going to be as targeted traffic, okay? I can click on suggestions based on what I have here, and let's pick something that's within our reach. Um, maybe do it yourself or something. Okay, nope. Woodworker. Okay, this is way too small, but let's just do it as an, as, as an example. It only has a 1,000 people. Um, it's not ideal. I mean, I don't want to. I don't want to spend too much. Okay, here, carpentry is three hundred thousand. Okay, so forty-five thousand people. It's okay, just for an example. So what we're gonna do now is right. The only thing we changed here was this. So we're gonna delete that and type in carpentry, and that's it. Right? That's our split test. We've done that. You can duplicate it over and over and over again now. So click here, you know, copy, paste. And now you can duplicate it that way as well. And now you have another thing here. You can go in here and let's change. Um, all right, let's, let's get more suggestions. And let's just say, let's just say, uh, let's see what's something big. Something big, carpenter labor, okay. So now we're gonna copy this. Cop I, I clicked on Control C on my Windows. And then let's delete that carpenter label, okay? And there you go, and that and that's it. That's how you test kind of all these interest groups, all these different um, laser-focused settings and stuff like that. Oh, before I leave this page, make sure to hit on review and publish so that it actually publishes everything and lets you know if there are any mistakes. Uh, you might have to enter your uh, payment information, right, uh, before this works. So select the province. Okay, so I went ahead and added my payment information. Uh, and I just published my ad. So I hit publish after that, that uh, payment prompted me to do. Uh, and that's it, okay? So here I am, the ad is now under review. I'm gonna go ahead and pause it because I, I don't want it to run. And one other thing you can do, like I said, I wanted to show you is if you click on this ad, you click edit, you can now preview it and what it actually looks like on desktop, okay? So if you click here and you click on view Facebook page with comments, you will be able to see, uh, or here, Facebook desktop newsfeed or Facebook post with comments, you will be able to see what it looks like live on someone's newsfeed as they scroll down, okay? So publish it and then you can see that. Now that being said, let me quickly show you the audience insights tool so you could do more research because like you saw here, you know, it's not the, the most efficient way of uh, figuring out what works. So let's go here and let's go into audience insights. And I'll just quickly show you because I, I do have another older video on this. So once you click that, click on everyone on Facebook, you know, select the region. And here you would type in the interest, okay? So let's say woodworking. You select it here. I think that's the right one. Uh, no, it might not be the right one because it doesn't show anything for us. Let's type woodworking again. Select that one. Oh, okay, sorry, this one was employer. See how it says employer? So watch out for that. Make sure it's interest, right? Unless you want to target employers, but in this case, it, the, there was barely enough traffic. So make sure it's interest. And you see like more information about this group. So people that like this group called woodworking is comprised pretty evenly split among women and men. And the, the age range is here in the 25 to 34. I'd say, you know, from 25 to 54 age range, which makes sense, right? People 18 to 24 maybe can't buy too many things or they, ha they have interests somewhere else like music and rappers like Lil Baby and stuff like that. So go to page likes. 
and over here you can get ideas okay so woodworking these are websites that are that Facebook deems to be top categories now honestly I'm not sure how this makes sense some of them like chick soul like women's clothing not sure how that relates but you get an idea here so what you can do is click on this um, Facebook page here and see if this relates to your woodworking guide at all push the boundaries of innovation okay so this is where the, the research comes in, okay? I'm not gonna, like I said, spend hours doing this because you can, you can easily spend hours doing this. But you would take a look, you know, and go through the feed, see if people are engaged here. You want engaged people because people that like this, if they're engaged, it's easier to sell to them because then they're gonna engage with your ads too, right? So this looks like it's something about like outdoor product design development, okay? So what you could do is maybe, um, you know, add this interest group to your test, test runs, right, to your campaigns. Then you just go through all this, right? You do more research. And you know, part of the issue why these are so broad is because woodworking has 35 million people. So that's one of the problems is that's why you're getting these things which don't necessarily, um, uh, which, which aren't necessarily super related. This affinity says how likely your audience is, li is, is to like this page um, compared to every other page. So the audience, the RTIC audience is 35 times more likely to like your page than anyone else on Facebook, okay? Is to like a given page. Um, based on what we're doing. Yeah, so I'm not seeing anything too crazy here, but now the next step, right? Let's suppose you do find something that relates. You take this RTIC outdoors, might have to tweak this woodworking interest a bit to get something more relevant. But let's type in RTIC outdoors. Let's see if it's here. Sometimes the interest group will not be available and that's okay. Like in this case, it's not available. So there's nothing much we can do. Uh, but what you would do is kind of keep going narrower and narrow and uh, narrower, narrower and narrower, right? So again, we type in woodworking. Um, delete that. And again, we just, you know, we go through this. We find something that doesn't have 35 million people, plug it in, find something that's more relevant, plug it in. And that way we really get to the core of people that are truly interested in the subject matter. Because if we just go with woodworking, 35 million people, well, anybody could like woodworking, people that don't even do it, right? So you're gonna get everybody from the funnel spectrum, right? Uh, from, from all the different types of audiences. So that's it, that's how you create your Facebook ads to go back to your ads manager, again, select this hub. Okay, so this one is lagging out for some reason, let's just go here. So you click here, right, on the page, again, you, you select this hub, and you go to uh, ads manager, and you go back to where you came from, okay? And that's how you create your Facebook campaign. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to leave it a like and subscribe. It helps me keep this momentum going, helps me keep making these videos. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, you will definitely like my Google Ads and my Unbounce playlist where I teach you how to create a landing page from start to finish and then promote it on networks like Google Ads or Facebook in this case. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you in the next video.